Today, you're going to learn how to boost the security of your Microsoft 365 environment with something called Privileged Identity Management. We're going to talk about just-in-time access and multi-factor authentication. We're going to cover it all. So by the end of this video, you'll be equipped with the knowledge to secure your Microsoft 365 with tight admin controls. But before all that, let's just have a quick introduction. My name is Jonathan Edwards, also known as the Bearded 365 Guy. I help businesses all over the world with their Microsoft 365. Now you can find more information at Bearded365Guy.com. So let's talk about admin roles in Microsoft 365. Admin roles in Microsoft 365 enable us to do some kind of admin task within our environment. Now, we can add an admin role to any standard user in Microsoft 365. Now, when it comes to admin roles, I like to use an analogy, and it's all about that of a large office building. So let's pretend for a moment that Steve works in this large office building and he's got a security pass that allows him into the different areas of the building. Now, if Steve doesn't have an admin role, it means he can get to the building and he can get to his particular office, but he's not allowed into other areas. He's not allowed into the executive suite or the IT room. Now, this security pass system, when applied to every person in the office building, helps to keep that building secure. Now, if Steve has the global admin role, it means that his security pass would allow him access to any area in that building, day or night. Now, there might be a valid reason why Steve would need access to anywhere in the building, day or night, or they might not. But what happens if Steve loses his security pass and someone who shouldn't have his pass now has it? It means that that person now has access to all areas of the building day or night. Okay, so let's now consider another way we can do this. Steve's pass lets him access the office building. It gets him through the front door and it allows him to get to his desk and to the canteen. But one day, Steve needs to go to the executive suite for a meeting. So he emails his boss and he asks him permission to get into the executive suite just for two hours to have his meeting. His boss reviews the email and he approves it. So this means that Steve is now allowed into the executive suite for two hours. After that two hours, his pass will no longer work. It won't let, let him back into the office suite. This seems like a good way to manage access in the office building, doesn't it? And this is what we can do in Microsoft 365 using a technology called Privileged Identity Management, or PIM for sure. It's a great way to manage admin permissions in your business. It means that certain people can be eligible to essentially apply for admin permissions when they want to do an admin task. They can list the justification as to why they need these permissions, and then it can get approved by multiple people within the business. Now, in a moment, we're going to hop over to my computer screen, and of course, you're going to get a full demo of how PIM works. But first, we need to talk about licensing. Unfortunately, PIM isn't available in Microsoft 365 Business Premium. So if you want to benefit from PIM, you will need to buy a license called the Entra ID P2 Suite, which is an additional six pounds per user per month. It's worth noting that this license has a whole load of additional security features, not just PIM. Okay, with that in mind, Let's have a demo. Okay, I'm logged into my test tenants and I'm logged in with my global admin credentials. You can see here, look, I've got a user called Harry Helpdesk. Now, we like Harry to do some basic help desk duties. We like him to create new users. We like him to reset passwords. Very basic stuff. But if I go into Harry's account, you can see here, look, roles, no administrator access. Now, what I see time and time again when we have this kind of scenario is someone will come in, go to manage roles, 
go to admin access and just give them the global admin account, which means Harry can do what he needs to do, plus a whole lot more. So that's not the way we want to do it. So if I just select user, no admin access. Now, if I hop over to Harry's account, just on Google Chrome here, this is Harry logged in here. And if I go to portal.azure.com, I'm now in Azure Active Directory. And if I go to users, and if I want Harry to reset LA Executive's password, you can see the password can't be reset. Harry can't really do anything because he's got no admin role. Okay, so go back to here. Now let's go into admin centers and identity. And we'll go to identity governance, privileged identity management. Okay, and this is the portal here. Now, let me go to Microsoft Entra roles and assign eligibility. So click on there. And we're going to get all the roles, all the admin roles within Microsoft 365. So for my role, I'm going to give Harry the help desk administrator, can reset passwords, etc., etc. So what I would do is go up to the top, add assignments. I would search for a role in here. There's my help desk administrator. And then what I would do is go here. And I'm going to choose everyone in my business who I want to be able to apply for the help desk administrator role. So in my example, it's just Harry. I might have a bunch of people. Click on select, click on next. And now we've got this setting here, assignment type. So the default is illegible. So that means Harry is eligible for this role and he can apply for it. If I change this to active, what it means is Harry has this role, okay? And that's not what we want. He has the role all of the time. And that's going back to how we used to do it. So I want to keep this as it is. The next section here is this eligibility permanent, or do we want to do it for a certain time frame? So why would we, we change this? Well, let's pretend we've got someone coming in who wants to look at the billing in Microsoft 365, and they're just coming for a couple of weeks to get the invoices, et cetera, et cetera. It might be a finance person. So we could give them the billing administrator role, and we could say, well, we only want them to be able to apply for this within the time frame that they're in the business, okay? And then after that, they can't do it. I will choose this because I want Harry to be able to apply for this all of the time. Click Assign. Okay, let me go back into Help Desk Administrator now, and you can see that Harry is there. Let me just show you the role settings. This is where it gets a little bit interesting. We've got all these settings here. Now I'm gonna click on Edit to show you these settings in a bit more detail. So the first thing, activation management duration. It's currently set to eight hours. So when Harry activates this account, he's got eight hours at a time to use it. You can increase this, you can decrease this. You might say, well, Harry just usually resets a password or creates a new user account. He doesn't really need eight hours. We've then got some um, activation MFA requirements, which is a good idea to do. So it'll mean Harry has to satisfy some kind of MFA. We've got Azure MFA, and then we've got the Enter Conditional Access Authentication Context, which is a little bit stronger. We've then got some op options here. So Harry will need to enter a justification. So why is he upgrading his account to help desk administrator? What's he doing? What's the justification? What about ticket information? Okay, if you use a help desk, you can put that on as well. And then the require approval. Now, this might slow things down. If Harry is just trying to create a user account and every time it's got to go to approval, it might slow him down. But if you're using a different admin role, an admin role that has lots of permissions, okay, has more access to your estate, then surely getting some kind of approval would be important. And I'm going to, as an example, I am going to use this, okay? So the approval in this case will be my admin account, okay? Click on next. Again, we've got some assignment options, so we can allow the permanent eligible assignments or expire them after a certain time frame, okay? Same with um, active assignments. I don't like active assignments, but you can do that as well. Click on next for notifications. And we've got some notifications. So when something happens, 
okay, with admins, assignees, approvals. We can put email addresses in there so everybody knows what's happening. There's a bit of a paper trail, okay? Click on update. And that is it from a setting up point of view for the help desk administrator, okay? But what is Harry's experience? Well, let's go over now to Harry's account. Okay, so I'm logged into the Microsoft 365 web portal as Harry. If I go over to here, I've also logged into portal.azure.com as Harry. And this is the enter ID portal that Harry Helpdesk can see. Now, towards the bottom of the page, you can see privileged identity management. And you can also just, just want to point this out as well. Harry has an enter ID P2 license. Okay. But you can see privileged identity management here. So I'll log on to there. And then under tasks, you can see my roles. Under eligible assignments, you can see Harry has the help desk administrator role. And if you go over here, there's an action and it says activate. So Harry would click on there. And this is what he's going to get. So you can see here, look, duration in hours. So Harry is requesting this for eight hours. Okay. At the top, Harry could say custom activation start time. So why would Harry use this? Well, maybe Harry is setting up some new users tomorrow morning. He's scheduled that into his workday tomorrow. So if he if he goes through and activates this now, his eight hours will have expired by tomorrow morning. Instead, what Harry could do is set the custom activation start time to tomorrow morning. Okay, so that's an option what he can do. He might think, well, I just need this for an hour. So there you go. The reason is, okay, is give a reason, is creating two new users who are starting the business tomorrow. Then he can simply activate that. And you can see your request is pending approval. Because if you remember, when we went through the setup, we need this to, to be approved, okay? Let's hop over now back to the admin. Okay, we're back here. So I'm logged into the global admin and this global admin is the approver, okay? I'm in the Enter Admin Center, Privileged Identity Management. What I would do now is go to Approve Requests. And you can see here, look, we've got the request for Harry. We've got the reason, we've got everything we need. So based on that, I can go through this and I can approve it or I can deny it, but I will approve this. Okay, click on confirm and Harry has now been approved. So he should now have the help desk manager role. Again, let's flip back to what Harry can see. Okay, here we are. So if I now go to active assignments, you can see Harry has this role. Now, if Harry does what he needs to do, he can go and deactivate it if he wants, but that is done. So if I go now and look at resetting a password, Going to users and executive. Let's reset Ellie's password. Okay. We now go through and we can reset Ellie's password because Harry now has the help desk administrator admin role. So that is pinned. So there you have it. That is privileged identity management in Microsoft 365. It's a great way to manage admin permissions for your business. I hope you've enjoyed today's video. Before seeing you guys soon.